Okay, um, we're back here again. Um, functionally, um, our application is doing um, everything that kind of we expect um, in terms of being able to calculate. If I just run this program quickly, enter some numbers here, uh, it should always select the maximum um, with what we've got. And so there we got nine. We can change these numbers up, and it'll no matter what I put in there, it's going to give me the maximum value there. So functionally, our application is working well. And sometimes when I program, that's kind of the way I get things first. It's functionally well. And then after the fact, though, I want to make sure that my, my program is readable. I also want to take a look and see, well, maybe I should have separate classes doing certain things. In object-oriented programming, uh, you want to have certain classes that, that handle certain tasks. And so um, in this case, I'm thinking I'm going to have a separate class called a calculator class. It's going to handle things like getting maximum value. Maybe within that calculator class, um, as you're going to see in your final project um, here, um, you're going to want to have a get minimum value and maybe a sum value as well. So we're going to have a few things to that, um, but I want to contain those calculations and those methods for calculations within um, that calculator class. And so we're going to start moving some stuff around here a little bit in this last uh, tutorial. Not a, Even though we're functionally where we need to be, um, we're going to do some cleaning up there. So um, back within our code, if I go to my code here, what I want to do is I actually want to create a new class. And so to create a new class, I'm going to go over uh, and just kind of look at the where it says the C sharp, this kind of project file here. I'm going to right click on that. And I'm going to go add uh, a new, OK? So we're going to add a class here. And so when I look at that, all I want is that I just want a C-sharp class. And so this is going to work fine. Now, I'm going to name that something, though, a little bit different uh, than class 1 CSS. I'm going to call it calculator CS. And I'm just going to add that to my project, OK? And so now you can see I just have a regular. If it, you can, it's very comparable to this form CS, that regular um, C sharp file. But this is on its own. It's part of the namespace. This project, uh, in my case, it's Morrison Nevin Assignment Four. Uh, but besides that, it doesn't have much in it. And we're going to put some things in here. So inside this calculator class, um, what I'm going to add is, um, first of all, I'm going to grab that function that I had in that form CS, and I'm going to move that. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste, really, uh, or cut and paste, sorry. So I'm just going to cut this out of here. I'm going to place this somewhere else. And so you can see now I have an error there. It doesn't recognize that anymore. I'm just going to move that over to this calculator class. And so now that's going to be a public method that's going to be maintained within that class. And I'm going to show you how to use dot notation in a minute to kind of reference that uh, method that's in the same namespace. So I've separated that calculation out. And I'm going to go back to my main form here. And I'm going to take a look down here. So um, now, in order for me to be able to call that method, I still need to use that method in my main form. I just wanted to move it to a different location so it's separated with all my calculator kind of stuff. And so what I'm going to actually need to do is I need to instantiate um, this class. So I need to make a version of this calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, calculator, and I'm going to call it um, calculate. Um, class. I'll just simplify it. Call it calculate class. Class and then I'm going to go equals new and calculator. Now what this is doing, just so you have an understanding of this, is this is making a new um, version of that calculator class here. Okay? Based on this, think about this as like a template, and it's making a new instance of that within my form one. Okay, 
So what that's going to do is now it's going to have me allow me access to that maximum or that max calculator. So, but what I need to do is I need to put this prefix in front of there so it knows where that is. Okay, so now that I've instantiated this, now I need to go in here and I need to go calculate class and then dot max. And now you notice that there's no longer an error there. Okay, now what that's allowed this to do is now it's going to use that method from within that separate class, okay? And so it's been able to access that from within here. And so it's a way that we can separate things out. Um, within this class now I could create, and this is probably on your to-do list for the, for to wrap up this assignment, which is your final assignment, is you're going to add a method. So you're going to add, add um, so this one here is calculate or determine the maximum value of the numbers. Okay, and so that's what you're going to do here. Now you're going to have another method within this calculator um, class and you're going to call it and then with this one you're going to determine the minimum of the numbers. That's kind of on your to-do list. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get through to that in this video, but definitely the next one. And then you're also going to have another one determine the sum of the numbers. You're just going to use simple arithmetic. You're going to put a method here and a method here. You're going to do that uh, to complete this last assignment. So. Um, basically, I've moved this, like I said, moved this maximum method to a separate class, and then I kind of have the form here um, to work with. And so, if I run my program now, I just haven't been able to access that right within here. So, I'll run this program, and now when I enter numbers in here, I should have a similar effect to what I just did. Okay, so I just move things around. Functionally, it's the same, but from a standpoint of organization, I have a separate class that's handling these calculations. Okay, so it's a fair bit to wrap your head around, but that is an, an idea. Um, what you're going to want to do um, when you go to do the minimum is you're just going to want to change a few things within here, and this is going to be this method's almost going to be a copycat of the maximum. And then with the sum method, that's just going to be simple addition. So um, I'm not going to tell you too more, too much more on that. Now let's just take a look though um, and run our program one more time. Let's. And I can get my program to error here if I enter in a letter. So let's talk about error handling and try and catch statements for a second. So when I type this in and I hit get max, you see I don't see anything happening right now. So I'm wondering what the heck's going on. Well, I know what's going on. In that first text box, I entered a letter. And so there's an exception that occurred there. Now, we can handle this exception in lots of different ways. I could maybe make that text box so it only accepts numbers and do stuff from the UI side. But what I'm going to show you now is an important kind of feature that you want to have available to you. That's called a try catch statement. So I'm going to just end that. And so any code that I think could possibly receive an input that I don't want. Okay, and so in this case, that text box can receive text, but I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it in this try code block. So I'm going to go try, wrap it in that, and then I'm going to have catch after. Now, if this code fails, okay, I want it to give me a message that says, and we'll go, so we'll do that message box again, dot show. Um, and we'll say, please enter only integer values in uh, text boxes. Text box one has been set to zero. So we're, if it errors, we're going to have it so that it displays a message. And so it actually displays that box number 
as zero so so that it doesn't error any longer and then along with that let's have that uh, text number one dot text set to zero as well equals so that we have everything in place so this is going to handle that case where that first text box runs into some problems so if I run my program again okay and I enter in here a y or something for an 8 it's going to display this please enter only integer values in the text box text box 1 has been set to 0 so it sets it to 0 and then finds the maximum number still okay and so we could do different ways of handling that but you can see I have so these lines of code here a message box which I showed you earlier I've reset the array value of the integer value within that array and I've also reset the text box to handle that okay and now I have to do this to all of these and so I can just kind of do something similar to this um, throughout let's just kind of get that done so I'm going to do the same thing to the rest of these so with this I'm gonna go first of all I need to end my code so within here now I'm gonna go try open bracket I'm gonna end up down here catch open bracket and I'm just gonna copy that chunk of code there so that I don't have to retype it. There might be more eloquent ways to do this as well. I'm going to change this to text box 2, change this to 1, change this to 2, and then that will be updated for that one. This last one here, same kind of thing. Try. And close that with a catch and you can see here I'll just update this as well two two and this would be text box three okay so now when I run my program I can't get it to crash anymore because I have try and catch statements in there that are going to help me out five y a whole bunch of letters seven and when I go get max it gives me the error message finds the top number still and then we're okay to go okay so a couple things we learned there we learned a little bit about um, how to handle user input that we don't want okay and before that though we learned about classes and how to handle, handle classes and have members within those classes called uh, methods that we can access Kind of in our main program okay um, that's all for this lesson we'll see you back the last lesson I'm just gonna kind of talk about things you're gonna need to do to complete your uh, assignment number four your final project